Let's right. talk about the Petri core. You want to do that? Yeah. Now you were the first. You you were even the worst to last. Though. You were one of the first <laughs> people to get your hands on this Petri core and measure out the grooves around the edge of it and run a string along it and determine that it was actually a spiral groove, not just horizontal grooves. No, actually, uh, William Flinders Petrie oh, was the first. Right. Right. Duh. <clears throat> no, I thought it was called Chris Dunn's core number seven. Yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> Petrie core number seven. Uh, yeah, I, I really uh, I really caused a stir with that, didn't I? Mm -hmm. uh, so I was riding the Giza power plant, and, and like I said earlier, a friend of mine recommended that I submit an article to... Uh, Analog magazine, which I did, and it was published in '84. So that was called Advanced Machining in Ancient Egypt. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and in that <clears throat> in that uh, article, I referenced the uh, Petrie core and uh, relayed what uh, Petrie wrote about it. Uh, that it was a a tapered core that came out of a, a hole, presumably that is, exists in the Valley Temple and uh, that it had a spiral groove. Uh, the grooves were 100,000 distance apart, and that uh, he, uh, he wound it, he checked like four turns of it um, and claimed that it was a true spiral. And he also said that the groove was cut deeper in the quartz uh, as it was the felspar. Okay. So when I was trying to figure out you know, using my machinist tool-making background, what kind of uh, technology could be could create those kind of features? Right. I proposed that uh, that perhaps they had used ultrasonic machining because ultrasonic machining <clears throat> is not you wouldn't. Uh, it's not like a conventional type machining where uh, you know conventional drilling of granite as I learned from uh, a an ultrasonic or, or a conventional uh, <clears throat> granite uh, manufacturer Ron granite in Ohio they um, conventional drilling holes it was, the penetration rate was like two ten thousandths of an inch per revolution of the drill two ten thousandths of right. an inch per okay per revolution so if you yeah, if you look at one hundred thousands per revolution, that's like five hundred times greater than the uh, than conventional drilling. Okay, it's an impossible feed rate in granite. Uh, <clears throat> so, and uh, you f you can figure out the rate by the distance between the grooves. Yes. Okay. Right. And and that's where the controversy began. Is that uh, I proposed. A method that was totally unacceptable, uh, ultrasonic drilling, which is uh, where you use vibration to impact the granite and remove material, and then advanced the tool into the granite uh, using a screw and nut method, as you can see there with the capstan at the top, and you just put pressure on it, uh, moving it into the granite. Yeah, you use a slurry. Uh, mm -hmm. which will actually do the cutting. And then there is a taper on the bore and the outside of the uh, the tube drill. And that taper, uh, the, the tube drill will wear as it is uh, penetrating the granite, and that is reflected in the, on the core and the hole as a taper. Right. So that's, that was just my idea. Just a simple idea mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, it received limited attention in in uh, after the article was published there was a couple of protests one by El Sprague de Camp who uh, objected to it <clears throat> uh, he wrote a book called the ancient engineers and uh, so he he claimed that you know the working of, of stone by the Egyptians is well known went through the whole list of you know, uh, copper, right. copper tubes, and and uh, bashing stones and stuff like that. Uh, so, <clears throat> um, I responded to his email, and then 
uh, that was pretty much it. And then in 1995, I was invited to participate in a message board discussion on Deja News, and uh, there was a, a guy called Rodney Small who had uh, read my article in 84 and, uh, and evidently had become a point of discussion on the Deja News alt archaeology message board. So I joined in, and that was my first taste of message board discussions. Oh, and wow. Yeah. And so after, I don't know, maybe a thousand, thousand or so <laughs> posts, I uh, it, the, it kind of petered out. I don't think anybody changed their position on This was it. what year, roughly? 1995, I think. Ooh. Yeah. You've yeah. got mail. You've got mail, right. Yeah, the old key. Yeah. That yeah. well, was before that, probably. <laughs> No, it was actually 95 when I first got online. Oh, was it really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, so I was on AOL. I'm still on AOL. Uh, <clears throat> Are you really? I know. People look at me strange like wow. that when I say that. Yeah, I'm still Good on AOL. Good for you. Still have the same email. Still holding strong. I don't know about strong. <laughs> <laughs> Holding. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. So then... Uh, <clears throat> After that, there was a uh, a book published. Um, it was by uh, Chris Ogilvy Herald and uh, a guy called Larson. Oh, I forgot his first name. I'll think of it. So anyway, they wrote a book called uh, Keys of the Truth, and in that book, they uh, they report on an examination of the core by two uh, people. Uh, uh, Reed and Brownlee, who go to the Petra Museum, where the core is located, and they determine that it's not a spiral, that it's a horizontal group. Okay. Okay. So, <clears throat> I looked at that, I read that, and I was like, well, okay, interesting. Uh, but it looks like the core is slightly tilted, and that would kind of throw you off. Uh, when you're trying to visualize the core, uh, the spirals, and it's, yeah. So um, I was still on on Petrie's side, but I, I, I was willing to be proven wrong, mm -hmm. right? But not just with that photograph. So knowing where the, where the core was, I arranged to go to the Petrie Museum and... Uh, and inspect it myself. And so I went to the Petrie Museum and I <clears throat> wrapped a thread around the core. Oh, I righted the, I righted the, uh, uh, the core. You can see it tilted on the left mm -hmm. uh, in the same way that the book, uh, the book shows it. And then on the right, I squared it up to the frame. Right. Right. And then in my book, I, uh, I, yeah, it's included, exactly the same thing. Yeah. Included this, which is a common pipe thread. Mm -hmm. uh, it shows you how just a slight tilt on a pipe thread, you can right. you can turn a spiral into a horizontal very easily. Right. It doesn't take much movement, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> simple. Very simple. All right. So there I am at the Petri Museum. And uh, there I am with my thread. <clears throat> and I found, well, it's a spiral. Okay, so... You followed it the whole way. Yeah, followed it the whole way. So I reported on that, and um, and on on my website and in message boards, I reported on it. And then I had, you know, kind of, no, nah, we don't believe you. Uh, you. You guys could be playing, playing tricks with you, mm -hmm. and, you know, probably confirmation bias comes into play yeah. where you're, you know, you are controlling you more in control of where the uh yes where the thread goes mm -hmm. than, the, than the the groove and i'm like well no that's not the case but okay that's the way you feel mm -hmm.